season already, but it is a disruption. It is a disruption, and Mark McCall has done his best to play it down. That We know that they've got strength in depth, but when you lose your first choice, scrum half and fly half, and the quality that those two possess, there's huge pressure on Ben Spencer in terms of his game management, and of course on Alex Good at 10. So the winner plays Munster in the semi-final, and they will be just two sets of 80 minutes away from the trophy at that point. We're underway, thanks to Stuart Hogg. Saracens gathering via their resident Scotsman, Sean Maitland. No doubt will have been rather more vocal this week, perhaps, in training and in preparation than in previous ones. Spencer at the base. No Richard Wigglesworth, as we know. And taken again by Hogg. Just wondering whether the hog, uh, whether the hog hair is anything to do with his move to the Chiefs and the need to, to be up there alongside the Jack Knowles of this world, Andy. There's so many levels to hog's hair at the moment. The colour and the, the amount of it uh, regenerating itself. <laughs> but uh, whatever it is, it's a it's a hell of a boost to have him back in the Glasgow team. Hey, we're, we're experts on hair regeneration here at BT Sport, <laughs> all except Lowell. Lovely line-out ball for Price to work with. Whipped along the line via Hastings. And off his wing is Stane and firing through his hog and they're releasing Hughes, the big man, down the left flank. Inside ball! What a start for Glasgow! Ali Price! Not even two minutes gone! Sensational work! Saracen's hit by a hammer blow. Well, look at those Glasgow supporters. They're making noise and with very good reason. A wonderfully well-crafted try. Look at this. Ball goes back through the line and it's the line that Hogg takes now. Just straightens it ever so. And then the timing of his pass is absolutely exquisite. The ball over the top, superb. And that is a wonderful start from Glasgow. Oh, good night. What an impact from Stuart Hogg. Just that step there to get straight up. Williams had to come in and Rory Hughes gets it inside. That was just a brilliant bit of pace from Stuart Hogg that inject. That's the difference. That is what Stuart Hogg can bring to any back line. Just as he did here in January, Ali Price scoring for Glasgow, but the return of this man, absolutely critical. His first appearance in seven weeks after the shoulder injury, of course, picked up in the uh, Six Nations against the Irish. They've got full value for it. Two minutes gone, Glasgow leading Saracens by seven points to nil. Well, Saracens were really worried about the fact that they've come out of the blocks, and it's that man, Hogg, Stuart Hogg, that's just straight in the line ever so slightly and just waited for Strettle to bite in on him and that created enough space for Price to get in behind what a start from Glasgow and what a test now for Saracens what do the Premiership champions have by way of response very very high restart from good it's been knocked forwards by Glasgow so there is a, an advantage being played Billy Vinopola first touch for the big number eight away, good. Using Barrett up the middle, he's shut down early. Hastings with the tackle, and good again, is firing forwards. This is Skelton, has been in magnificent form in the last couple of weeks. Two tries against Harlequins at the London Stadium. George Cruz also rediscovering his best form more recently. Toji, the ball dislodged, tucked in the tackle. Big hit coming in from Rob Harley, and Hastings is getting away, and he's finding the holes, and that's gone forwards potentially. I think he's good I think on the counter. Maitland just tapped it back as good, puts it in behind, and now chases his own kick. Maitland onto it, and then scragging Kyle Stain just five metres out from the try line. Glasgow struggling, giving up the penalty. Yeah, Stain did his best to try and sort of get to his feet, release the ball and pick it up again, you but feet, Nigel Owens ball. doesn't think he did and it legally. It. Yes, he did. <laughs> well, there it is. Penalty against Stane. What an opportunity now. Jamie George with the line-out throw for Saracen to hit right back. Wonderful opportunity, he's extremely accurate with the darts, 100% last week, got Billy Vinopola standing in at nine for the moment. All of which suggests a hefty bit of driving work 
coming Glasgow's way. Yeah, they have initially uh, repelled it, but all the backs look, they piled it through Saracens. That's come down illegally, been pulled down, so it'll be a penalty advantage from Nigel Owens. Confirmed by the referee, good, digs it over the top, knowing it's a shot to nothing, up goes Liam Williams! <laughs> has he got it done? Okay. He has. Wow, well we have started at 100 miles an hour here at Allianz Park. Saracen's hit back, Liam Williams moved late on from the wing to full back. Yeah, and it's that combination, Alex Good, it's a shot to nothing, they had the penalty advantage. Glasgow will be desperately disappointed to concede that try. They could have just diffused that in the air, but give credit to Liam Williams, he's the one that keeps his eyes on the ball and gets over the line. To level the score. Fair play, well, they were practicing before the kickoff this very skill, chasing a, a high ball going forward, not just defensively. Tries and it uh, obviously Hardwick. came up yep, Trump there. Good work, boys. Very few have the better of Liam Williams aerially, as England found out to their cost, of course, in the Six Nations. Brilliant that day for Wales from fullback. Lazowski adds the extras, and we're at seven points apiece after six minutes yeah this is how it came again look delicate little chip in there you think glasgow got three against liam williams one but the welshman prevails well we know what sounds on his twitter feed by way of job description it says professional bomb diffuser well he's done that at the back for many years for uh, for wales of course and now he's using it in an attacking sense that that aerial skill Oh, I'll tell you what, that ball was there for Stain to take. He just didn't back himself enough. There was no Saracens player that came near it, and he could have reclaimed that kickoff. Have a look at this. Maitland's nowhere near it. Gets blocked out of it. Just needed to gather that. Yeah, yeah, left of the mark. It's Kyle Stain making his, uh, his European debut. No Tony Seymour, no hand in Merva either at the moment. Shoulders South African with, uh, with Scottish grandparents. His father, by the way, Nelson Mandela's security guard. Crouch! Bind! Extraordinary story that he has to tell his father, Rory. No reason whatsoever to come back up there. The space was good. No reason whatsoever. It was all good. Stay down. Well, that's the lovely thing about having Nigel Owens no as referee. Whatsoever. He explains good everything space. to uh, us in the commentary box to. and you at home. towards halfway, perhaps not quite as much distance as he would have liked, but no even looking at the try from up. Glasgow. Well, it's just the threat of Stuart Hogg and what he can bring to it. You see it here, when he gets the ball, that's two on two, but it's just this little step here, brings Liam Williams in, David Stretlin as well, and it allows Rory Hughes to get on the outside to put the pass inside. That is exactly what Stuart Hogg can bring to this team. Line-out ball secured by Cummings, and they go around the front. Picked up by Swinson. Quick ball for Price. Hastings. Stain. Up ended. There's some uh, space out here in this five metre channel if they can work it. The trumble forwards again by Swinson. The offload is good for Price. They're deep inside the 22. The line speed isn't quite what we would recognise from Saracens just at the moment. Wonderful offloading in the tackle, though, that's causing Saracens problems defensively. Hastings pulls it back for Stain. Runs into a, a black wall. Hughes. Ferguson. Bryce. Not that late. It's been knocked forwards in the tackle from Saracens. So crossfield they go. And into touch goes the ball. Knock what, on the tackle. Advantage, advantage over. over. That's a tough one for young Hastings there. You wouldn't have kicked that ball away. You'd rather have the scrum under the post, wouldn't you? Definitely. And the, the try came around. The Sarri's try came from an advantage over. You've just, you know, sometimes they work for you, don't they? It's just you, you've got to play the referee, obviously, but sometimes referees take a bit longer to say advantage over. Pressure on the Sarri's line out. George and Cruz That's a rock, it's a rock. well. Yeah, just got lost by his own lifters there. Nothing illegal from Glasgow, so just fell to floor. 
Ben Spencer, no Richard Wigglesworth, of course, he's watching on. And Ben you know, Spencer's going to take dumbass. his time here with the box kick, the clearance kick. Trained by Hughes, who's then bundled by Dave Strattel. Brilliant box kick from Ben Spencer. Perfect height, perfect distance to allow Glasgow to be tackled at the touch. And it's now, that's now an attacking One kick because they've now got the ball back. Yeah, Brilliant execution by Spencer. It is the trademark exit, isn't it, for Saris? Perfected over months and years of practice. News! Toji. Close to ground. News! Been out since the game against Ireland in the Six Nations with knee trouble. He's hungry for action. Spencer again goes high. Plenty of hand time. That's gone forwards. So two from Skelton. Sarri scrum. Well, again, it's all about the quality of the kick from Spencer. And uh, just causes that little bit of doubt. Doesn't quite... Rory Hughes doesn't quite get there in time. That's what he should have taken, though. But two good kicks, as you say, well, has taken Saracens from, what, seven yards out of their own line to now attacking just, uh, just almost close to the Glasgow halfway line. Let's go. So scrum time. Yeah, interesting for Saracen. They've had to uh, bring a few changes there. Christian Judge playing only his fourth game. And obviously Richard Barrington. So uh, by no means what they call their first choice front row. I just wonder whether it's an area that Glasgow might have targeted. Yeah, a little bit of pressure on that Saracen scrum for sure. No lack of an opponent remember at loose head. Vincent Cock lying in wait on the bench. Recent neck trouble. Saracen's come away with it for good. Uh, Toji oh, thinks about the little chip through. He's hung on to it. And he's driven forwards effectively. Spencer. Good. Williams. George. Bouncing off the defenders. Lazowski. They're inside the 22. Spencer. One more offload. Didn't quite stick for George Cruz. Advantage not over. And they're going a long way back. Number 12. I mean, I, I give, you know, Nigel Owens is saying advantage yes. not over. Uh, and uh, he goes back for the deliberate knock on, but no yellow card. So that'll be a penalty to Saracens. But if you're a Glasgow player, you said, What about when we kick the ball out? Just on the a second after they knocked it on, Saracens try to said advantage over. So not criticizing him, but it's just what consistency the players. He's saying it's deliberate Sorry, knock again, on, no uh, tempting. To, that's, he's not just trying to catch the ball, Saracen's he's going half, for the tackle. Yeah. Uh, so near the blue Heineken side. That is a long, long Inside advantage. The when they've made about the five half. offloads Inside and the all the scores. Yeah, yeah, they've gone to within about, what, eight yes, metres. Thank you. It's called a home team advantage, I think, is what it is. No disrespect to uh, referee, fans or players. Good. You would like to tuck that inside the 22. It's just outside for now. Try to show you help you to go back to the correct. Eight starts in the number 10 jersey this season. His 70th European appearance. Itoji delivering on a plate for Spencer. Good. And Barrett. George. Good again. Whipped away by Maitland for Williams. He's dragged down by Hong. Just had to check on the pass, didn't he, Williams there? Jackson Ray. Let's go, go nice and low, chopping the men down, and Maitland comes bustling through the middle. For the Glasgow man. The advantage is being played again. Spencer. Shaping for it. Just one the other sideline breach. I think that's Callum Gibbons that's just been caught offside as. Uh, Saracens Sam now Blue. go to the offloading Offside. game. It's that fine line of just getting that line speed, getting right in the edge. They want to close Saracens down, but you've got to do it legally. It's hard to see where that was. That looked like um, Sam Johnson to come out of the line there, but. <laughs> oh, the talk about emotion. Mark McCall's normally fairly calm and collected, but this is how big this game is for his team. and. They're responding to the challenge right now. Just be aware now, there were three penalties now, all coming from you, okay? So Scott Cummings is coming off for an HIA. Yeah. Yeah. That's the call from my Johnny AR. Gray on one. in his place. Plenty of quality amongst the Glasgow replacements. 
Not absolutely at his very, very best this season, Johnny Gray. I think by common consent. Nevertheless, a key addition. Lazowski adds three and puts Saracens in front for the first time in the match after almost 15 minutes. Yeah, Johnny Gray has just been he's been carrying a bit of a shoulder injury, I think, for most of the season. He's Same just way. not quite had that that uh, run of games and, uh, and and free of injury. But Scott Cummins has been playing really well re recently, so we'll want to get him back in the field. Lazowski gathers the restart and makes good ground beyond the 22. Hughes outside, take him back. Apollo. Hughes! Quite the distance that Spencer wanted from the box kick. It's fallen nevertheless for Jackson Ray, and they've gone a long way beyond halfway. Lost now! Lost now! Spencer stay got dragged out, into out. the ruck. Messy old possession. On his feet, then lost when he went to ground. Good. and Strettle watching it carefully, but it's Backwards. taken by Hughes, who can't get the kick away. Well, that's full marks to Alex Good. Really sensible option there, nothing on, just pumps it high in the air. And he knows that Glasgow have got to defuse the aerial bombardment, and they're not handling that particularly well at the minute, and just giving up field position to Saracens. But Saracens are winning the aerial battle without a doubt. I mean, that was a great cross-field kick there, yeah, Rory Hughes. If they're in late, does they get, get it eventually, but then tackled it a touch by Liam Williams. Another great kick chase, and we saw Ben Spencer's third box kick of the game. wasn't a good one, but it was a good kick chase. And a bad kick can be made a good kick with good kick chase. Line out ball from Cruz. Vanapola whips it away to Spencer. They've got some momentum behind them here. Barrett inside the 22. Quick ball again for Spencer. This is Barrington. Good. Liam Williams looking to go around the outside. Dragged down by Hughes. But there, they move it forwards through Cruz. Slowed up at the very least from Glasgow. Toji rides the contact. Blue moves! Judge the dummy runner. Vinopola comes trundling forwards. Taken on now by Christian Judge. There's trouble potentially here for the Warriors. The momentum is building. Lazowski, a little isolated. He could do with some support. Two jacklers in over the ball for Glasgow, and they've done enough. Holding on at 13. Great bit of work. A combination well. of Kyle Stain over the ball. and Matt Ferguson. Holding on. Yeah, the first penalty over. against Saracens, and just as Lazowski comes in, he gets his body position wrong, isolated. Unfortunately, hasn't quite Wonder got five. the strength to stay on his feet. And he's ambushed by Glasgow. There's a real lack of communication there because that was that was one pass and isolated. So where was the support? Hey, they must have been the wrong side there because that was as soon as, as soon as that pass went out, we were all thinking penalty because once the tackle was made, it was easy turnover. Callum? Yeah, left himself vulnerable. Just be sure when you are running back Fraser for the Brown kick that nobody's treatment. changing lanes for looking up for the chasers yep. coming from to block them, okay? Yep. Just have a word of that, please. So let's um, let's guide you through what else is coming your way on BT Sport this European weekend. A little later today, the defending champions, Leinster, in action against Ulster in Dublin at half past five. No Johnny Sexton for Leinster, remember. BT Sport three for that one. And then later this evening, tonight, eight o'clock, Worcester against Quinns in the quarterfinal of the Challenge Cup. Tomorrow, it's La Rochelle Bristol also in that competition from half past 12. The winner will play Sale. Winners last night, of course, against Connors at the AJ Bell. Rashing 92 against Toulouse from 2.45. The old French affair of the Champions Cup. And then back to the Challenge Cup for uh, our offering at half past five. Tea time tomorrow. Claremont against Northampton. A Challenge Cup quarter final. We have two sides that. Um, very okay, much have ambitions to return to the top okay, table in Europe. And then rugby tonight, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, BT Sport 3 with Maru Itoji, our special guest. And that taken early. Hoisted by Spencer. Continuing with this aerial theme, Saracens. Hogg safely underneath it for Glasgow. Ew! 
news. I've said news, boys, and you're using now, please. <laughs> when does use become use? Yeah. Who knows? That's 12 seconds. Yeah. It's a familiar theme. Williams. Setting off beyond halfway. Spencer for George. Tackle release! No way through. Half blocked by Cummins. Oliver Napolo is taken early, but he's kept the ball alive, and Liam Williams is sauntering across field and now straightening in rather more of a hurry. Skelton. No thought of passing on that occasion, was there? <laughs> Just taking absolute direct route. Yeah, not much sauntering either. I was standing, was standing next to him on the pitch. If he's lost 20 kgs, I hate to think what he was, but he had those 20 kgs. It's a terrifying prospect. Up it goes once more. And uh, it's taken. Just beyond the 22. Price for Hogg. Stay blue! Better handle there. Oh, right it's taken back into the 22, and Hogg's fired it directly into touch. Well, it's those kind of mistakes you can't afford to make against the side. The quality of Saracens and Glasgow will be a bit concerned. They're just allowing Saracens to spend a little bit too much time in the wrong end of the field for their liking. Two bad kicks for Stuart Hogg. He's got brilliant kick in him. He went for length at the penalty and he didn't quite make it. And then there, poor decision. The whole pitch to aim at and he put it out in the full. J10. Another opportunity here, potentially for Saracens. Vinopola for Spencer. Double pump of the ball and then clings onto it. Picked up by George again. Could use some support. Itoji arrives. No, Black! Black, you drove it to the ground so you couldn't do anything. We played that ball. You slowed your own ball down. We played. No, no, he's been put there. Let it come, please. Stay back. He was driven. No, he's not. He was driven into it. Skelton. Yes. Penalty Glasgow. Yeah, you've got to clear out. Skelton does his bit, goes to ground, but no clear out. And Glasgow get another soft penalty, really. That, that was brilliant uh, refereeing from Nigel and the ruck before, the contact before. Because the you did go in and keep the, the Glasgow clear in. Let's see what he says. Comes in and pins him there. I'm not going to penalise him for not moving then, OK? So that guy was trapped because your player just trapped so him there. The for the ceiling off, was that? Yeah, the pen here was for the ceiling off, which is another defence. But you've got to let them move. Ni Nigel just made my point for me. <laughs> In his own words. Yeah. Squid, you just make the effort, OK? Are you still talking? Yeah, yeah, you understand, and that's why there was no penalty. I understand completely. Right, let's bring in Alex Sanderson, part of the coaching setup, of course, with, uh, with Saris. Um, Alex, let, let us have quite a bit to be dealing with already after only 21 minutes. Uh, where should we start? Should we start with, with the start and the, the fact that you were hit early? The nightmare start, yeah, if you like. Um, I've almost forgotten that now, I've black boxed it. But they, they, weren't, they weren't prime ball, didn't they? Right at the tail of that line out. It means your spacing has to be perfect to your back line. And obviously, uh, Liam admitted he just made a bad read in that outside channel. So it's a well taken try from the first opportunity. Uh, they're a good attacking side, we know that. They've got talent throughout the back line with Hastings and Hogg. There's two receivers and two distributors. Uh, they're going to play with a better width than you've seen. The other thing they've done is that change of direction uh, from the midfield rooks, which has caught us out a couple of times. So you've got to be looking every time you fold around the corner defensively. And what about the right penalties recently, the right penalties which, um, which have hurt you to a greater or lesser degree? Yeah, well, massively really, because we've worked hard to get down there and our kicking game's been brilliant. We've won all the crumbs in the air. So you've really got to capitalise when you do have those, those opportunities in opposition 22. Uh, it's what's been said over the walkie-talkies. We've got to work harder and be faster on our inside cleans and perhaps a bit more work on the floor to make sure that Jacqueline player isn't over the ball uh, on point of contact. And just briefly, Alex, obviously with Owen Farrell uh, unavailable, how, mu how much of a disruption was that? We've seen Alex good plenty of times at ten, of course, for, for your lot, but hey, oh, it, it is a disruption, it. isn't it? Well, he's, he's a brilliant leader, he's, um, he's a brilliant player, you know, so you want him out there with the rest of them, uh, but there's some things that are bigger than rugby, and having a kid's one of them, so we all wish him well, uh, and we planned for it in the week, and Goody's going well so far, isn't he? Point well made. Thank Let you. Go. All right, cheers. Gathered in by Hogg for Glasgow, beyond the 22. We're hearing that uh, Scott Cummings will not be returning, so Johnny yes. Gray is with us on a permanent basis for Glasgow in the second row. It was 
Very interesting listening to Alex Anderson there, just saying that the threat that Glasgow posed to the Saracens' defence, in that they they split the field. So when you're, what that means is defensively, when you're scanning up, you've got to scan both sides of the breakdown and look at the numbers. And uh, so far, they've been caught out a couple of times just by Glasgow coming back down one of the short sides. Price trying to return the the aerial favour. Liam Williams. Good, plenty of men out here for Saracens if they work it quickly. Maitland for good, show of the ball, didn't want to give it to Jackson Ray. It's there for Spencer again, Itoji, rampaging towards the line and he's cut down early. Billy Vunapola, strong line speed from Glasgow. Conceded those initial metres, they're now standing firm around the 10 metre line. Here's Skelton looking to puncture a, a hole or two. Turn over fair, play on, and then run back by Black. Ray. Keep your feet. Oh, what a contest there is on the breakdown. Both sides really going for it. Told you. Spencer, good. Mazowski. Nice tackle from Stay. Yeah. Lost! Over the ball, but he's off his feet. The, uh, the Glasgow Jackler. And a polar. Did really well not to play the nine. Ben Spencer then give away a needless penalty. Trademark Spencer Snipe gains an extra three metres. Cruz rumbles forwards. Over the ball is Ferguson. No! Has to give he up the fight. Play on. Good. Barrett. Williams. Kept it alive well. Barrett again. Inside the 22 once more, no, George to, play, play to the short side, stretch all! Brilliant! There was nobody there. Everything he takes for granted with Saracens, clinical and ruthless. Oh, it's a really, really well worked try. Barrett just up in the intensity physically when he took that ball into contact. Just got himself a few extra yards. And then when they, look at this. This is him taking it in now, just fights for the extra yard. And then Jamie George recognises where his winger David Strettle is and where the space is. That's really good recognition from the England and Saracen hooker. Look at this, when Barrett takes it in, he just fights for an extra yard. Gets a, And it's the speed of that breakdown that is the killer for Glasgow. And once the ball's in David Strettle's hands, it's a simple run in for a try. Try's good, Nigel. Delight for David Strettle, who was due to start today on the bench, but due to that reshuffle in the back line, came in on the wing, doing what he does best. He's got a tremendous record here in the Premiership. 19 tries at Allianz in the league. This is his first in Europe this season. the face this time from Zoski. first miss from the tee, 15 points to seven. That was, it was a really good try because a lot of the defence up to this point had actually been really good from Glasgow, but they just didn't reset quickly enough on the far side. And Jimmy George, great awareness and a great finish from Strettle. Well, the, the one thing you get with Nigel Owens is you get speed of ball at the breakdown because he does insist consistently for both sides that they roll away. And on that occasion, it was the speed of that Saracens ruck, about five yards from the line that opened up the space for David Strettle. And Hawks put that straight in to touch. Well, we saw the intervention of Stuart Hogg's feet from an attacking perspective for that first try. But then that's three, there's been three kicks, there's been two kicks from hand and then a set piece. And these are just the little things, Ali, they're not... They're not huge in isolation, but just compounded. All it's There's done is given space, field position, me, really position really and possession space, to Saracens. Hey, last drum was good, so same with this one, boys, OK? Thank you. So it's given the Saracens. You all happy with the set depth? Space is good, yeah? Okay. Let's keep it as you want. On, uh, on halfway, out. they are dominating possession at the moment. 71% of it. Let's go! A crew by the home side at the moment. There's um, an Crouch. interested water boy in Ryan Wilson alongside Mike Band. Blair, part of the coaching setup now with Set. Glasgow. Hold it there. Oh, no. Wilson, Keep one it of those up, who really Band. managed Feet to get strong. up uh, Saracen's noses in the pool matches. Uh, a decent scrum here, but uh, not all that much control at the base. Nevertheless, they have the penalty. 
Saracens have got the nudge, they are driving square, and you are coming around. So there we go, very well explained by Nigel Owens, I think they're a Dominant tad fortunate leader, there, they just lost square. control of the ball at Down the base of the scrum, so I think Nigel's given them the benefit of the doubt because they were square and going forward. Just wonder whether they'll kick to the corner, yes, Alex Good. from that botched restart. Glasgow find themselves very quickly back on their own 22. Yeah, it's, a, it's that scrum again. You can just see it's the, it's the picture that they show staying relatively square, but Billy Budapola loses the ball. Spencer feeds Barrett. Another Bullock King run into the 22. And here comes another bull in the form of Billy Budapola. Spencer, George, the playmaker. Lazowski, beautiful. Wonderfully worked, and the captain goes in. Saracens in something of a purple patch. More crisp handling, more crisp finishing. Well, that's one that's straight off the training ground. I just love the directness about it. It's Barrett first, smashes it up as he did for that try just a minute ago. And then Billy Vinopola takes it in, and it's the speed of the ruck ball again. Jamie George. How important is he to this Saracen set up? Lovely little hands. Once they get round the corner, it's the switch of direction. They go once, one way with Barrett, then round the corner again with Vunapola, and it's the fast switch back down the short side, and there's space for Barrett. That is a beautifully constructed try. I think okay, boys. They're looking tidy and good, yeah? Well, he is the heartbeat of this Saracen side. Yeah, try here against Glasgow a couple of years ago in the quarter final. Leading from the front, but that influence of Jamie Jaws seems to be growing in that in the kind of that playmaker role. Which, if you if you look at front row forwards, as Lazowski drills over two more points, he's al he's almost taking the role that that Ty Furlong likes to take for Leinster and Ireland. Yes, yeah, the ability to to take the ball to the line, uh, which we know he can do, but also it's the soft hands that he possesses, and we saw it a, mo a moment ago for the Strachan try. And then the same there for the Barrett try. When you see a try like that, my immediate reaction was poor defence. But actually, when you see it again, it's very good attack. Just done the simple things done very well. Good running, good passing, good angles, and a great try. Yeah, I think when you look at Glasgow, you, it's the speed of ball for the breakdown that's killing them. They've got to get in there when, when Barrett and Vunapola make those first breaks. Barrett's the ability for him to recycle himself off the floor. And, uh, and get himself back in the game, and he's the beneficiary of that, no, no, that try. In. Spencer again from the base has measured that beautifully. Andy, just going back to your point, you know, just a few mistakes that have really compounded for Glasgow. At this level, and we're talking the very top table of European rugby, you can't afford to make those sort of mistakes. From one minute, Glasgow being in the game now, Few mistakes, field position, 22 points to seven. Absolutely. I mean, this, in the last 10 minutes, 12 points, hardly any field position. This is the first time they really have any ball to attack with. Line out time. Gray juggling with it. Move! Too slow, tackler, wrong side. Dow goes to ground beyond the 10 metre line and they try to exploit. Spanish penalty. Back. Any areas around the fringes of the ruck. Barrett with no the tackle advantage. once more. Back we go. Yeah, I think they've learned their lesson on the advantage penalty now. Just uh, get tackled behind the gain line, and now okay. they'll have an opportunity to kick it into the corner. Wrong as you side. see, is that George Cruz getting some attention? Yeah. He's had a week, a, time, a week's time rest. He's obviously done. picked up a I'm bang on the head there. Nick Ezekwe would be his replacement should Cruz need to go off that's some sort of medieval torture huh? by the way that's him warming up <laughs> just come out don't let him come out okay you're going to sort it through now will yeah, 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 you okay? yeah 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 I'll wait for you to come it's going to take a while I think yeah. for George Cruz just this is just how it happened here as he comes down let's just have a look how he lands ouch ouch okay. he's, he's really sore yeah. he's got his neck in an uncompromising position he gets squashed He's a tough lad, but uh, is he going to carry on? Yes, he is. How good a six inches yeah, he have? Well, I've been very impressed because by his high standards, you know, he, 
he started off playing well on the Lions tour, then then it didn't quite go so well for him. He, he got a bit of a reality check, and he's come back. You know, lost his place in the England team, and then he's worked really hard. Yeah, good to go. Had an, uh, a little clear out operation at Saracens, and huh? and he's come back, and he's probably playing the best rugby of his career at the Time moment, on. as you say, brilliant in the Six Nations, and a really important player for Saracens in this running. So Glasgow going for goal. Which um, after the the recent when there's a kick and chase momentum yes. swing, make sure you don't look where they're coming from and then change your lanes. Wise, Take a natural line. It's about problem. stop the bleeding and uh, you know get some points on the board and just keep try and claw your way back. Keep hold of this. Get in the you know, 22 10 down at half time. You know, you take that. Maybe claw another f three points back, but you just cannot allow. You just got to stop the bleeding. Cleared with ease by Adam Hastings. Saracens 22. Glasgow into double figures now with 10. One of those involved in that crazy, chaotic match that took him off the bench in the Six Nations. And of course, Saracens, plenty of those England players featuring today. They will not be feeling comfortable with this kind of lead, or indeed a lead that's three times as big. They will all be on edge until the final whistle is blown and the deed is done. Hey on, not a problem, backwards. Let's take Hastings back. again. That's a big kick from Hastings, really nice. Split the post there. Couldn't kick it out because he'd taken it back in. Equally well returned by Alex Good. Yeah, but yeah, again, it gives Glasgow a line out to start an attacking play. You know, they, they lost a bit. They've lost their zip. Obviously, they've been they've been punch drunk. Maybe with what's happened in the, those last 30 minutes since their try. But just need to get their attacking shape back in their game. Fraser Brown with the drums beating picks out Johnny Gray. It's just Gray. a tackle. It's just a tackle. No more form. Price disrupted for a brief moment. Taken up by Ferguson. Hastings lying deep to allow himself a little bit of time under pressure from Vunapolo. He's got away a very good kick. Liam Williams is there. Follow up is strong from Stain. The Bobby Fuse are doing his job. Who's? Barrington. Release. Familiar routine. Maitland on the chase. No, we just touched Rahe it. Norstein got a hold of it. That's gone okay, forwards from Jamie it. George. Again, just the aerial kicking from Saracens, just causing a lot of problems. You know, when Glasgow kicked the ball, you see Liam Williams catching the ball with time and space to check his run. Every time Saracens kick the ball, there's a lot of pressure in that air, and that's what their game's based on. It's what they practice time and time again, and you can see it paying off. Let's keep the dominance, whoever it may be. Driving straight and legal. Fast five, keep driving straight, no running around. Here here today, but uppermost in their mind, the quarter final exit to Leinster in Dublin last year. Crouch! Really stung, arguably contributed to their excellent finish to the season. Hold it there, keep it up! Premiership title, but they didn't like being deposed in Europe. They've given up a strong penalty here. Barrington picked out. One injured. Just checking what's uh, win against that man. Such a Barrington. Interesting choice to go for goal again. Must be fairly confident about his distance and range. And there's uh, Stuart Hogg came up to have a look at him there as well because Hoggy was knocking them over from everywhere. But you know, this, uh, I imagine, this must be right in Adam Hastings' uh, limits. Just tell you what, when you, when you see a scrum like that, where you, the bind looks okay from both props and they both fall to floor at the same time, I think that's a tough decision. I mean, it's you know that could have easily been a reset. It's anyone's yeah. guess. It was the touch that it called it, wasn't it? Because Nigel was going to do a reset. I think Richard Barrington can feel. A little bit hard done by there. That was um, that was tough. 
potentially an area that Glasgow were looking to, to target with Barrington and Judge operating at prop this afternoon for Saracens. This is a long, long, long shot for Adam Hastings. Got it. Well, again, he's cleared it with plenty to spare. No shortage of goal-kicking pedigree in the family, of course. You know, that now was a very good decision, wasn't it? It's just another three points. Claw them way back into this game. That was a very good kick by Adam. Everything that Edinburgh didn't do in the early stages against Munster at Murrayfield earlier today. Absolutely. Taking the points on offer. 22-13 with uh, less than three minutes Last to go in this first half. Fair contest for well, uh, Sari Scrum just on the 22 now, so the potential yeah, for further through, points as they head to the break. And again, it's an illustration of the kick to compete. You know, the quality of this kick, the quality of this restart allows Saracens to put the pressure on that forces the mistakes from Glasgow. Cannot underestimate. It's one of the pillars of the game, restarts and kicking game. And Saracens are yeah. right up there with the very the best teams in the world. Unless you've got a knock on after that. Knock on, black hand, knock it back. Rory Hughes yeah. is having uh, yeah. his work cut out. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. First. Yeah. Okay, so no knock on by Blue. Actually, yeah. that's, that's, just, just re, re showing correct. that again. He's just okay. been cleared up. That's actually Lazowski. My apologies, I thought it was a blue hand, the black hand, knock it backwards. You were in possession, it'll be scrummed down your ball. My apologies, my AR has corrected me, okay? Appreciate that, thank you, boys. Thank you, that sounds like that Apologies, came from the Saracen's suggestion. Time will come on Nigel when we are ready to set up. Saying that he appreciated it from from the Saracen's players. Well, I think it came from, it came from the, the AR in the first day, Ben Whitehouse, I think it was. But I think the, the Saracen's guys just took it, took it fairly and said, that's fine. Right. We're outside, OK? Which is very much not in keeping with the spirit of these sort of matches. <laughs> Recent history, but it's good to see regardless. Can you, back to, can you get back to not liking each other, please? I thought you might say that, one. Crouch. Bind. Set. Hold it there, lads. Keep it up. Keep it up. Get bind up. Solid at scrum time, Glasgow. Yeah, they've got a nudge on here, they might. Yeah, they do. Draw. Draw the penalty there. Yeah, there you go. Stay in the back row. There is a, a moment of significance potentially. It's also a fair decision by Nigel Owens. Oh, there we go. There it is, well. Well, this is <laughs> normal order has been resumed. But this is exactly what Dave Rennie uh, pinpointed in the week. He said it's remarkable. The moment the Saracen scrum becomes dominated, you see. Little flashes of, of pushing and shoving, distraction. Whether that is the case in this instance, who knows? You must continue to bind on your own team. You cannot slip up and get on the opposition team. That is the penalty against you. Stay bound on your own side, OK? And not off you go, please. That's my decision. We're not going to start that nonsense today, now, are we? No, I, I, I hope so. And that'll be the end of it. Thank you. Off you go, please. Thank you. Good, Ben. Back row, stay on your own side. Penalty here. Jamie George is at huh? the bottom of, uh, of all of that. And um, some shirt seven, inspecting, eight, some close range nine, shirt inspecting. Ten. That's a better kick from last Stuart seven. Hogg. That's really taken Glasgow no, no, down into so the edge of the 22. 22 but that was a lovely scrub from them. Nigel no, Owens rewarded Saracens a moment ago when they got the nudge on, and Glasgow put in a good shove and they get their reward too. Half a minute left in this first half. One last opportunity for Glasgow to add to their 13 points. Crucial time. All eyes on Fraser Brown. Has to hit his mark. He's gone over the top, but it's been gobbled up by Harley. It's there for Price. And Gray. Release. Hastings. Looking to try to slip past Cruz unnoticed. Thank you. Last play. Oh, great. Slammed again by Barrett. Time for those black shirts to try to hold out here. Johnson massaging the defence beautifully. Hastings checks. Sorry, sorry. 
heads in a different direction. He's enveloped by the sizable arms of Maro Itoji, but Glasgow come again. This is Oli Kevel. Terrific finish to this first half from the Warriors. Hogg again for Johnson. Keeps it alive. McDowell brought into the equation as well. To the short side. Price. Hogg. Hughes. Keeps it alive. And it's gobbled up this time by Will Skelton. Very gratefully from a Saracen's perspective. That was looking extremely threatening and very dangerous. Glasgow finishing strong, but half-time at Allianz Park. Saris have three tries through William Strettle and Barrett to one well, from the Warriors from Ali Price. Saracens 22, Glasgow 13. All the analysis coming your way in the company of Richard Wigglesworth. On your second row. Nine points in it then. So it remains very much in the balance. Eddie Jones watching on. A number of men out there who he'll be taking a, a keen interest in. Saracen support strong these days. Big numbers of Glasgow fans have travelled down too. And they will know that their task remains an uphill one. Sarri's unbeaten here for more than a year. They've conceded only 21 points in second halves through the course of this European campaign. So six matches, 21 points conceded in the second 40s. So they know how to close a deal, but nothing is a given. Right. Nothing is a given, and they've showed plenty of glimpses. Nigel, no, he has to, to suggest yeah, that okay. they have justified faith and hope in everything that they are doing. And these are anxious moments yeah, yeah, for everybody right. because knockout rugby means okay. bitten fingernails. Then behind you then, okay? Alex Good then to get us back underway. He's done a, a sterling job at 10 as he has okay. for quite a bit of this season when Owen Farrell has been absent <laughs> with England. who will be certainly becoming used to that view deals with it well this time we're back to Hogg looking for some distance trying to dig it in behind Liam Williams who chases back and will launch his own counter-attack pops it up for Strettle not too many options available no changes by the way made to either side at half-time, just that one change that was made during the first half for Glasgow with Scott Cummings off, Johnny Gray on. Good for Cruz. Good again, this time Lazowski. Still in the hands, still in the hands, still in the hands. Spencer. Didn't lose control, still in the hands. Whipped away by Billy Bonapola, good for Judge. Release, this blue. tight head prop from Cornwall, who has made such a success of his loan spell. He's off to Bath next season. Over the top goes good, taken in by Strattle. And seeking out some support. He finds it in Billy Bonapolo. Good again. Stuttering run. Release, which blue. Very often tracks defenders. Skelton. Patience in the face play at the moment from the home side. Cruz again back to the sanctity of the rest of his pack. Hughes! Skelton pops it on for good. Decent defending work though coming here from One blue Glasgow, offside. but just a little bit too quick off the block. Yeah, Oli Kevill really disappointed that for Glasgow because they defended superbly well there. Face play just jumps the gun, look there. And when you do it on your own, thank you. It's lazy, though, isn't it, Lord? They didn't have to do their defensive line. They've actually been really strong. They've been knocking them back, and that's just—it's lack of concentration, isn't it? Again, it's just one of those little mistakes that all add up, and it's the chance for Saracens just to extend their lead. 
Kozlowski's been kicking well. Three from four so far this afternoon. Number one, okay, I think you jumped a bit early before it was up. Probably one of those that Eddie Jones has his eye on because he just seems to have fallen away from the international picture, not picked since the, uh, the game against Japan back in November. Picked up a, an untimely ban. Drilling three more points for Saracens, who now lead by 25 points to 13. Just efficient, isn't it? Asking the opposition to make the error. Patient until the penalty is awarded. Three points. Back and go again. Hogg. Awkward one, this one. Picked up by Lazowski. Just giving the ball straight back to Saracens, though. If you look, you look at that kick versus the, the one that Saracens put in there, which is uh, high, hanging, and there to compete. Another wonderful clearance from Spencer. How good has his kicking been from the base today? Yeah, I've been very impressed with him. I spoke to Wiggy about him beforehand. You've not seen a huge amount of him, and you know, I just wanted to. He's when I stood next to him, he's a big lad, Ben Spencer. He's not, you know, he's, he's a different type of scrum half, and uh, been really impressed when watching him live here today. Well, so will Eddie Jones, who's up there in the stand somewhere. I'm sure, he'll be uh, keeping a close eye with. Uh, the way England's scrum half situation hangs at the minute. Harley with the uh, line out ball, Stain is off his wing. I find he was and on his the feet. The turnover has been affected by Saracens. Barrington is in there, whips it away for good. Chance now on the outside. Maitland. That's back against the grain, and the light blue shirts are there to meet him. Was... Possession of the ball back in Saracens' hands. Spencer. Good. And the mark called by Rory Hughes. Where you are? Well, how about this for a piece of skill from the Saracen skipper? Hey, boys. Zoski comes in there, makes the tackle, Barrett straight in over the ball. Well, he's well beyond the ball, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Stays on his feet. I mean, referees, I think they. They, they were big and hot on their hands on the floor, but that, that rule, you know, not just today, but across the board seems to have gone away a little bit. And it's the speed that Barrett's able to turn that ball over. Well, the kick wasn't terribly clean. And uh, that has allowed decent field position here for Saris. I think that's one of these ones, look. If, if Barrett had been sure what's happening? tackled with, with his hands on it, having gone beyond it, he'd yeah, have been penalised. Because he actually took the, the ball back himself, him. I think he got away with yeah, it. No, I, know it yeah. I appreciate that, I know that. I'm just going to get the gap. So wait for me, please, OK? Oh, wait. Take the mark off the AR, OK? Wait, lads, please. Take the gap off the AR, OK? Thank you. Yes, good. Time on. Jackson Ray. Awkward one for Spencer, his skeleton up the middle. Not Nearly cut loose. He's almost made it to the 22. Spencer is there, options left and right. Heads to the short side, on the bounce to Lazowski. This is Strettel. Another tricky one for Spencer, that's gone forwards from Glasgow. So Saracens will have the scrum, it's just a little untidy. Are you winning the turnover legally? You lost it forwards. Black Shame ball, that for Glasgow because they had a nibble at there. Yeah, didn't quite the survive the clear out yeah, when you got on the first forward, occasion. Let's have another look at this. Look, they've got a great opportunity there. He's entitled to place the ball immediately. I think it's McDowell that's over the ball, isn't it? And unfortunately, he just doesn't survive the clear out and knocks it on. But how about that charge from Skelton? He turned slow ball and relatively static ball into about a 20 minute game. There can't be many better than this. Like, I don't know, Louis Pickamalls is very good off slow ball, Josh Strauss was gone, can be good. Billy Bona Paul is actually good, but my goodness, it's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Crouch! Bind! Set! Hold it there, keep it up, lads, keep it up, bind up and high! Keep it up! Saracen's had uh, one or two issues at the scrum in the first half, but Apollo from the base haven't seen too much of him. In all honesty here this afternoon, Spencer has it, Itoji takes it at short range. Hills. Judge. Stopped early and low by Swinson that time. 
good. On the pole up. And man marking him with um, at least two men at the moment, Glasgow. And keeping him pretty quiet as a result. Yeah, it's just important that Glasgow keep their discipline, their shape defensively here. The Saracens are just going to hold on to the ball, go through the phases. They've got to keep their concentration. And Skelton again. Spencer. Again, a little knifing dart. Here he comes. We're playing that. He was falling Skelton, down over the shoulder, not the high tackle. Very hard not in the second tackle. period so falling far. Falling down over the shoulder. George pops it up. Jackson Ray sets the target this time around. Over the ball is Johnny Gray. He has to Stay back, please. shift himself away. And the polar. Gets the ball away somehow or other. Here's good. Sends it wide. George is on the wing. Tries to ride the tackle. Brilliant, quick ball. Liam Williams bursts through. Like a bolt of electricity, Liam Williams comes clattering through. And that is Saracen's fourth. Well, it's another brilliantly crafted try. Again, it's the delay on the pass. They get out to the edge. Alex Good, just a little step. And how about that for a, a no-look pass to Jamie George? I think Jamie George has had a hand in every single try, hasn't he? Uh, unbelievable, he's got the strength to stay in field, he knows where the touchline is. This is not easy for him, he's still got a lot of work to do. Little show of the ball, drops the shoulder, but then turns his body infield, stays in, and a lovely line run by Liam Williams. Hard line, very difficult to defend, back against the grain. And that is Saracen's fourth try, and they now look to be in a very commanding position in this European quarter-final. Yeah, Mel was very weary after the Colcutta Cup game to say that the games are done and dusted, but that, to get that I try am, there um, after the penalty, the I, I whether this conversion goes over or not, with each other and that it just was went vital to, to, for Glasgow to keep them out. Keep an eye. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, OK, thanks, boys. That's very neat from Lasowski. There is a rather different picture to the scoreline now 32 points to 13 four tries in the bag the position set up by Jamie George from five meters out but what a line this was on the angle Callum Gibbons and Stuart Hogg were really arguing with Nigel Owens about something and you can't, I can't see anything there lol that uh, they're aggrieved about Cruz Rumbling forwards very effectively. Nikizikwe is onto the field now. Tucker! Spencer. All on. Seven's on side. High once more. It's going to fall. For Vincent Koch, who's newly on the field. They've changed both their props, Saris, in the last few minutes. I know, I know, but there's no advantage from the knock on by Blue. Scrum here. Andy? Well, no, it's just uh, at the moment everything is going Saracen's way. You have a really poor kick from Ben Spencer. Still nobody's taking it from Glasgow and, and they get it back. And then there's a knock on, you can see there. There's no way Fraser Brown's getting that. Takes it in, there's a knock on here. And good hit by Fraser Brown, dislodges it. But there's no advantage over it, it's the right call to go back. But it's just what you can tell Glasgow players are frustrated because things are just not going their way. Not, not against them, it's not the referee going against there, them. But I was playing advantage to knock on by you here, so advantage wasn't over, that's why. Yeah, I okay. get on yeah? that, I quite enjoy <laughs> So as Saracens just begin to take what looks like a firm chokehold on this match. A reminder that you can see Leinster against Ulster from half five this afternoon. BT Sport three, no Johnny Sexton for Leinster this afternoon. Worcester Quinns, quarter-final in the Challenge Cup tonight from eight o'clock at six ways. BT Sport three again. And uh, staying in the Challenge Cup, La Rochelle against Bristol, half 12. Tomorrow afternoon, the winner will play Sale. Back to the Champions Cup, Racing against Toulouse from 2.45, and then the Challenge Cup quarter-final between Claremont and Northampton from half past five. Crouch! BT Sport 3. Set. Bind. 
I was just reflecting on how impressive Saracens have been. Really have. To lose your, Richard Wigglesworth and Owen Farrell. Richard earlier on in the week and Owen just before kickoff. And I said at the beginning a lot of pressure on Ben Spencer and uh, Alex Good, but how well have those two played? And you look what they've done now. Look at some of this, this stats here. 40 dominant collisions to eight. You know, you're not going to win a game if you're only having eight dominant collisions. You know, there's 17 neutral. And look at the negative ones. So just huge dominance in there by Saracens. Keep it up. Look at the difference that it has made. Well, we just potentially had a, having yeah, we had, we had two new props on the field, okay. not borne out in in a penalty or meaningful possession for the moment. Well, Nigel Owens just showing a little bit of leniency, no, uh, I think. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying no it's gone 90 before. Anybody. It just went round the 90, okay? Reset, same ball. Keep driving square. Christian Judge and Richard Barrington have made way for TT Lamasatelli and Vincent Koch. Toji and Cruz now in the let's go, let's crouch go. in the second row for Saris. Bind, set, hold it there. <laughs> Free kick taken quickly oh. by Price, and Nigel Owens doesn't like the fact that he's disappeared in a hurry. I mean, it's probably half a yard Sorry, away from where it needed to be. Okay, you were too far away, he said it's from the mark, but we are talking half a yard, and that, that's the sort of impetus that Glasgow need. They can spark at any time, and Ali Price, in particular, just loves that sort of opportunity. I think the referees always get a bit nervous Control. when the scrum half taps it in front of them. You know, if, if he's come from behind him, he'll let that play on. Well, that's very tough. He was right next door to him. I agree. Very tough. I think that's a great shame just generally across the game not not that decision necessarily but I think across You're the right. game it's great to see nine sparking teams into life and full of energy full of enthusiasm and they need something here Glasgow they really do Price will be all too aware of that he of course um, conjured a little bit of magic at Twickenham himself didn't he with that little chip over the top and gather and the tries began to flow with Finn Russell at his mercurial best but they're going to need something not dissimilar pretty soon Glasgow or their goose is cooked yeah definitely definitely the next score there's no doubt about that I know it's a little cliche but they absolutely need to get the next score and that could be it that could be the, the platform from that quick penalty but they're going to have to find another way we know they've got the attacking game, we saw that in the first minute. We've not really seen anything since though. That would be, I suppose, the frustrating bit from Dave Rennie's perspective. That after that first initial fantastic attack, they've looked uh, not quite as sharp. So one or two um, anxious faces at the moment. So Macabin Apollos is not one of them, by the way. He's, he's out injured just at the moment with... Uh, with Ankle trouble, but some um, Lama Sotelli's crouch shoulders, boys, please. Thank you. Crouch. It was his own ankle that was causing some trouble, and there was a question as to whether Barrington might have to return. Regardless, the American international takes his place, and they've won a scrum penalty now. What, what, what is what's remarkable about that? And you know, the last penalty looked like an obvious penalty, and then that. That not so much, and that's where it's a bit hard for people to follow this sometimes, isn't it? Yes. If you're not, uh, if you don't understand the front row, of which there are countless thousands. Mazowski lining it up. Here's the um, here's the penalty offence. Straight yeah. down on this near side. Well, again, Nigel Owen's been reasonably consistent across the scrums when uh, either side have got a, a nudge he's been assisted by the, the two ARs as well on the sideline but Saracens as uh, Andy saying when you do seem to be getting all the calls at the minute everything's going their way and they'll take it Turned early, Lazowski, he knows it's good. Saracens know it's good. 35 points to 13 now. 25 minutes left to play. 
Yeah, all they're interested in is winning the game, aren't they? They're not here to put on a show. They've got four tries, but that means nothing in a knockout game. It's just about winning. And uh, Saracen's displaying that ruthless edge. Lazowski's confident, banging him over from everywhere. A couple of changes made by Dave Rennie. Nico Matawalu is on for Rory Hughes. Yes. And a change at tight head with Alano Kanuka on for Fagerson. Hey, when you use it now! Spencer. Oh. Maitland patient in the chase. But Dowell did well. And Glasgow offering a little bit here through Kevill. Swinson. Price. Fagerson. Away, Black, move! It's Alana Kanuka, Hastings. She's got a chance, their arm a little bit, Glasgow, haven't they? Yeah, yeah they're chasing the game. Chasing the game, they're looking to throw those offloads and that... Just playing into Saracen's hands, defensively. Staying brought down on the 10-metre line, this is Fraser Brown. Terrific noise inside Allianz Park. Shirts there in good numbers. Energised in the second period, and there it's picked off. Strattle, Arch Poacher, two for the day, under the sticks, and surely pointing the way now for Saracens and a Heineken Champions Cup semi final. Well, there was an inevitability about that. We were just saying that Glasgow looking like they're forcing it, and they don't come any easier than that. There was a waiting committee for that pass. Rest assured. Anything I see, I will deal with it. And my TMO is checking everything behind me, OK? I'll back you go. Now, this, now this One of the best in the, in the business, isn't he? David Strettler reading it. But to be honest, the work had been done the earlier on in the, uh, in on the phase yourself, play. Yeah, just in the, terms uh, of I couldn't, I, I the just tackles raining in from Saracens, no pushing Glasgow further and further, and further back, and then forcing them no, almost into clear, desperation. Dave Strettler, who turns 36 in July, uh, enjoying his return to it's Allianz like, uh, Park after three seasons with Clermont. The easiest of conversions for Alex Lazowski. 42 points to 13, and time against Glasgow now. You know, there's times where you will take a risk and, and, and just pass it on without looking, but that was not one of them. That was a, a poor decision. You see when it comes out here, it's already coming out the bear. It's just, you cannot pass it. In a backline move with has gone two passes already, you'd know there's always going to be a defender there. Strattle, of course, who was not supposed to be in the starting lineup this afternoon. His presence due to the impending arrival of a new Farrell. That's straight out on the full knot for the first time today from. Stuart Hogg. Well, it just sums up Glasgow's afternoon, really. You cannot afford at this level to make those kind of mistakes, and he knows it. He's a test player. He's just coughing up possession at a time when you need it most. Not once, but twice. Well, we could get that down to rust. Straight back into top flight of European rugby, but those are the kind of things which... Frankly, should be grooved by this point. I think, you should, I think you've been very generous. That, like that's, that's a basic skill that is just so ingrained. You do practice so many of them, and there's been what there's been two. There's been kicks on the field, and that set again. They've just given possession territory straight back to Saracens. Keep it up, lads. Keep it up. Keep it up. It's there for Vodopola. Scrum penalty forthcoming. Everything going Saracens way at the moment. Well, it's relentless, and uh, you know you can understand why they've done that. They feel like they've got the advantage. Fresh legs coming on from the front row. Third scrum penalty. Nigel Owen's not prepared to be too lenient on this occasion. As soon as the heads pop up and Saracens are going forward, he's been consistently awarding the side that are going forward. Stay straight. And Lazowski wobbles it. Swinging your hips <laughs> this one after the straight. 22. Yeah, just about into touch. Not the prettiest of beasts, but it's done the job. George Horn is on at scrum half for Glasgow. 
one or two rolls of the dice now from uh, from Dave Rennie. Off comes Price, and uh, the likes of George Horn, Andy, and uh, Nico Matawalu. Perhaps those players that really could spark something. 20 minutes to play. They need a, a little bit of uh, magic from somewhere, a rabbit out of a hat. So these are the guys that can finish things off, but you need to create stuff, and Stafford McDowell cannot throw those uh, interception passes. Here goes Billy Bonapola, and that just wouldn't oh, quite stick. Yeah, nearly got that, but not line out. Definitely line out, nearly had it. Nearly had it. Knock on option. Jamie George barreling forwards onto this one, potentially. Really nicely constructed move at the front of the line. Now look at him, he's furious, Jamie George. Yeah, it came off, uh, came off Adam Hastings' hand, so it is a Saracens line out. He nearly had it. You can hear Nigel still saying he nearly had it. Nearly got it. He went with one hand, he almost got up for the second hand. Yeah. If, if, if the other hand hadn't come in, then you'd be questioning whether that was deliberate. Right. Well, we, well we've seen yellow cards for less. <laughs> George then for Saracens, one of the standouts this afternoon. Cruz climbing highest at the line out. George has his arms on it. Brad Barrett is riding alongside him. Kick him down. And the ball is dragged down. Oh, Got to ask yeah. a question. That Illegal collapse of the mall. He's been 19. very lenient then. If you collapse it in that situation, Number 19 blue. surprised he didn't go to his pocket. And if it had gone any further, then he's going to the post as well for the, the penalty, isn't he? Yeah. And he's deliberately pulled that down Discipline because Saracens boys, have got a, 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 a bitten off, they've sheared off the original drive. And I think Glasgow are lucky not to be uh, down a man in the pack there. And still they put the squeeze on Saracens. Quarter-final, of course, two years ago. Finished up with Saracens winning by 38 points to 13. Currently going quite a bit better than that again it's Cruz with the line out supply line and the rumble is on and they are after try number six yeah Barrett's coming in captain over oh, yeah, the line yes, they go a try. try awarded it's that man Jamie George Brad Barrett looks to be in a good deal of pain and if he's grimacing you know it's bad well he was he, he would argue that he gave uh, Jamie George the extra little bit of weight that was required to get it over the line look at this it was only a matter of time Glasgow penalized on the first line out but second time round watch Barrett coming in here just to add his weight oh, Jamie George burrows his way under you can see there there's the grounding of the ball but Barrett comes in zikwe has got his back turned, and it's over on the other side. Jamie George, oh, who has Nigel. been outstanding throughout this match, thoroughly deserving of a try of his own. Rich reward for the Saracens hooker, who's been in uh, in great form. Firmly England's number one hooker now, with uh, Dylan Hartley having not played for for so long. And a reminder as well, he broke his nose or had his nose broken for him at Scotston, so he probably will have enjoyed that try all the more off the back of it. It was a very unforgiving fixture, that one. A number of Saracens players went down injured. But they are rubbing. Glasgow's nose is in it right now. 49 points to 13. This is a drubbing. I think the thing about Jamie George is... We've seen, we've seen the depth of his game today, you know, it's, uh, I mean, and the challenge for someone like Eddie Jones is how can we unlock that potential that we see here at Saracens week in, week out. We want to see more of that in an England jersey because he's been absolutely outstanding, not just in terms of the set piece, the bits and pieces. We know hookers have to scrum and line out, but it's his, you know, what he's done in open play, the softness of his hands, the work rate. Super. Not gone, unlucky lads, up in the air, forward or blue. Yeah, forwards from Glasgow. I got that right. For whom today is unravelling. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's a, there's a gulf between these two two teams, there's no doubt about it. But Glasgow have been the architects of a bit of their own downfall, a bit of that gulf, because they've just not been accurate enough. There have been too many mistakes. And you give a team as good as this, who are just relentless, they're not going to... They're not going to... You'll play this incredible wide, wide rugby they're just going to grind you down and keep going at you they guess they guess sniff they're going to go all over you and that's what saracens have done very very well shoulders 
Crouch. Here are the arrivals. Set. For the match that follows at half past five on BT Sport, Craig Leinster against Ulster. And Billy Villapola is sending the ball out for Alex Good, who's being afforded an awful lot of space, and it's floated just in front of Alex Lazowski. Hogg wants to go early. He's not done much wrong, is he, Alex Good? Dave Strattle's off now. A brace for him today. Mark boys, and, uh, Nick Tompkins is on in his place. We've also got Scott Berger on the field for what will be um, one of his last appearances. He's leaving Saracens this summer. Destination unknown. Carry Gray Hastings to work it for McDowell. No, last not been afforded any breathing space today. McDowell Hastings conjuring something here. Nice transfer from Johnson to Hogg, pairing towards the 22. Inside ball is a good one, and George Horn is away. The Warriors have something back, they have something back. And given the events of a couple of weeks ago, 15 miles south of here, we hold our breath and wonder whether there might be there might be another miracle on the way. It would have to be truly extraordinary. Well, I did say George Horn and Matawala can finish things off. That's exactly what's just happened. Good, good, good space being created there by Johnson, by Hastings. And Stuart Hogg's got the pace, he's got the vision. And it was an easy run in from the scrum half inside. Okay. Just what Glasgow needed. Decent kick from Hastings. 49 points to 20. They are still a long, long way adrift. But Seven. George Horn with a little spark. Yeah, they've had very little possession to work with in this second half. And once they do get in behind, that's the quality. Sure, Hogg, ball in two hands, could have gone right with the pass, chose to go left, make it nearer to the post. Who's captain? A weary. Six. Callum Gibbons makes way for Chris Fizarro in the back row for Glasgow. Saracens aren't exactly hurrying towards halfway to restart the match. Glasgow just six. trying to draw the sting a little bit potentially. Okay, came on. Some tight men there the in the front row. They've done good service, but they've been on the end of a bit of a battering. Here's Matawalu. Keeps the ball alive. Albeit well, flirting with danger, which is kind of a default setting for okay. Nico oh, yeah. Matawali. Right, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. He doesn't really do safe. No. Hastings, Matawali, nicely worked, and Glasgow have found something ah. here, but that has that gone forwards. That's the ruling from the touch judge on the far touch line. Yeah, I think we've got Ian quite Davis. a serious injury here. Tim it's Swinson's there, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's Tim Swinson, the second okay. row. Looks yeah, like he's. Uh, Damaged his ankle. He's in a lot of pain. Yeah. And, uh, this could yeah. be quite Hold a long break. Well, let's have a look at this forward pass because. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't think there was nothing. Uh, oh. I don't think there was nothing of foul well, play. It's one of those. I'm not sure that, that angle is terribly good for for judging that, but it was oh, one of those where the man yeah. was hit as the pass was delivered, which was makes it look yeah. as if the ball travels okay. further forward. Very uncomfortable, doesn't he, Swinson? What's going off with you? Oh, say again. Yeah, landed on the outside of my ankle, twisted it. Right down, did you? Oh, I bet it is. If you look at the hands, I mean, they definitely the ball went forward, but that's that we know that's not 
what we're looking at is whether it came out of the hands backwards. As you say, he got hit, so... No, I thanks for being honest. It's one of those tight ones, isn't it? Good luck with it. Yeah, just going back to this terrible incident here with uh, Tim Swinson. He's Nothing sinister there, Nigel. He's, got his, he's obviously landed uncompromisingly on his ankle, and this, unfortunately, looks very, very serious indeed. He's been out for a long time, actually. The start of the season, he was out. I can't remember exactly the injury he had, but uh, it's very, very disappointed. So as we wait for uh, well Tim Swinson's exit, let's have another word with uh, with Alex Sanderson, who's uh, on the touchline for us. Alex, um, you'll be thrilled with the scoreline at the okay, moment. No, but is there just right? a little bit of anxiety over the fact that Glasgow, just in the last five minutes or so, have got a bit of zip back? Yeah. Um... Yeah, for me, being the defence coach, certainly. <laughs> and they're going to have to run and play from everywhere. So we've just kind of sent a message on just to stay out the rooks, numbers on feet. And if we need to push them to a touchline and be slightly less aggressive with our line speed, then we'll do that and, and to live to fight another day, really. Because at the moment, we're biting in, and you can see just beautiful hands uh, to create the space in the wide channels. Alex, the game was uh, was close just after half time. What have you been really pleased with in terms of the way your side have applied themselves in that opening 20 minutes of that second half? Well, we turned the scrum around. I mean, that was what let them back into the game, that last 10 minutes of the first half. So we had a good shot about how we did that. And we just chased the hit a little bit harder, put a bit more impetus in the back row. So we've been winning penalties rather than conceding penalties. Against, uh, they're, got, they're against the win this half as well. So we've been putting the ball in the right areas. It's very difficult to play out of that half when we're against the win. So territory along with the set piece. And, you know, and, the, and we're taking those opportunities that we didn't take in those first 15 minutes of the first half. Uh, Alex, we make a lot of this sort of thing in the, in the media, of course. But it was instructive, I thought, in the week to, to hear one or two Saracens players and indeed coaches talking about the motivation for, for today and for this European campaign being based around all sorts of things, but in particular the your quarter-final exit to Leinster in Dublin last year. How, how much has that really fired everybody forwards for this European challenge? Yeah, we love the European Cup. You know, we've fallen we've fallen over it the last four or five years where we start to make some inroads and get to finals. It brings the best out of this team because the opposition are the best as well, so you've got to raise your game. Uh, and we know we didn't put our best selves out there last year against Leinster, a bit of a hangover from the Six Nations. But this year we've really concentrated now quickly, we've had to come back together. And the back of the Six Nations have made this a, made a target for us to, to be on the same page, to be firing as we have been uh, today. Alex, thanks for your time. <laughs> so, uh, a warm applause for Tim Swinson. We wish him a speedy recovery. And in the meantime, Saracens look to put the squeeze on once more with the scrum some ten metres out. Yeah, look at that. The, uh, the match momentum shift and Billy Bonapola be licking his lips here at the back of the scrum when he eventually gets the ball. And Alex Anderson mentioned that scrum, they've really turned it around. Surely. <laughs> well, they're just waiting for the penalty there, Saracens. And Nigel Owens was not going to give it. And that just incredible stats there. There's just complete dominance from from Saris in all on all aspects. Jesus good. Let's go Williams has come off. Max Malins is on in his place. It's a, a European debut for the 22-year-old. He's had a number of starts in the Premiership this season, both at uh, at 10 and at 15. Let's go, Billy. Back down. Crouch. Find. Set! Hold it there, drive square! They should have full back for now as Saris look to their forward power. Billy Bonapola using Barrett. One try already for the Saracens captain today. Spencer searching for runners, finds his equal. Whips it out, and Tompkins fires his way through and under the posts. Still 10 minutes to play, still Saracens hungry for points. Well, it's just a very efficient score, isn't it? Their power game is just too much. Look at this, Billy Bonapola takes it in. Barrett, who's been outstanding on the game line all the way through this match. And then they've just got too many power runners. First, Ezekwe, and then Tompkins, who's had a superb season. Caps his cameo performance with a try. It's just power, power all the way, isn't it? It doesn't matter who it is. But when you've got guys at Villapol in the front foot, bad bar again, quick ball like that, then Tompkins, just uh, good decisions, make good tries.
two more from Alex Lazowski. And the scoreline surely means now that Saracens are well and truly home and hosed. Good power from Ezekwe and opportunism and upper body strength from Tompkins as well, who um, was deeply disappointed to be left out of the starting 15 this week. He's played a lot of rugby this season. Not a whole lot to choose between him and Alex Lazowski in the 13th shirt. Tell you what's so impressive okay, though is yeah, not just the power, it, it's the technical display as well. Because when you know it's you the ball play, placement, it's the speed pitch. of ball at the breakdown, they, you play, okay, they're a team that are absolutely in tune with what they're doing. It was a penalty advantage. Do you want to play? It? No, we don't. And uh, I'm just, just a timing issue, okay? Careful, please. It's as probably as an emphatic a quarter final performance as in this competition as we've seen for quite some time. You know, what was a, a very positive day for Scottish rugby with Edinburgh having a home quarter final against Munster yeah. and Glasgow being here. Both teams in the knockout stage, the last eight for the first yeah. time. It's turning into being a pretty poor day for Scottish rugby with Edinburgh losing at home and obviously Glasgow getting uh, blown away here at Allen's Park. Jamie George makes way. Fine performance this afternoon. Just a tiny issue with the Great appreciation here at Allianz Park for, him, for his all round talents. Time we wait. oh, we're waiting for him, time is up, we're waiting for him. Replaced now by Tom Wilston Croft at Hooker. They're in late, there's no numbers, time on. Straight into action, former London Irish man. And Ezekwe gathers it, shapes to give, and then decides that there's space for himself. Whiteley's on at scrum half as well. Berger combining with Lama Sotelli now as Saracens move over the 10 metre line. Itoji. Whiteley. Good. Wide from Topkins and touch foul. Play, 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 play. Taken quickly by Glasgow, who have no choice but to hurry things along. Hastings draws the man nicely and now sides back infield. He's dragged down by Scott Berber. It's not tight, it's not tight, he's on the shoulder. Jersey on the shoulder, not on the collar. Johnson, apologies for the language. Working that short side, this is Jamie Batty. Paul, Gray, Hastings. Move left! Stain is enveloped. Then again, Hastings picks out Hogg. Again, you felt Saracen sniffing for the intercept. 20 grade, 20 grade. No! No! Oh, no! delay on the pass, which allows for the... Saracen's line speed and they're just soaking this up at the moment long yeah, going nowhere now then you know you feel for Glasgow they've got a chance to run a big burst here and an ugly offload and George Horn has got the ball away and Hogg is on his way he's being hunted down by Malins really good tackle from Malins and Lazowski Hogg though very close looking to reach out and haven't released the ball after the initial tackle penalty Saracen's Tackle was complete, that's the difference, and right under the nose of Nigel Owens, he's not going to miss that one. As they make the break, it was well worked, wasn't it? He just didn't quite have the angle. And credit Saracens for tracking back. I tell you what, some pace shown by there, by Marlins and by Lozowski, because when Hogg got that ball, you just thought, try, didn't you? He's maybe not quite a full pelt after just coming back from the injury, but fair play, 56, 20 up. And you're still showing that commitment. He had one opportunity to play that ball, and he just saw he just went for the second attempt. Yeah. There's your picture for the day. Certainly from a, a Scottish perspective, an unhappy sight. Well, it'll please Alex Anderson, defence no coach, numbers, delighted with the way that no his work, the side of work back to save that try. Wilston Croft picked out one handed by Cruz. Superb take, wasn't it? Didn't quite get the lift right there, but just got the paw out and uh, scooped it back in. 
Advantage, Santi Blue side entry. Total dominance from Saracens now. Penalty advantage. Whiteley's trying to skip away. The, uh, the offload was blocked no, by the presence of Hastings. On. Number 17 Blue, side entry from the mall. It's Jamie Batty. 17 Blue. If you give a penalty away in a game that Nigel Oates is refereeing, I can assure you that everyone knows who, yeah. who's given that penalty yeah. away. Because he repeats it three times, which is... Uh, Named and changed. Absolutely yeah. no hiding place, we, is there? We all give away penalties, Lord, didn't we, that you go away with? Not with Nigel. <laughs> Time for your man of the match. Well, there's been some notable performances, the likes of Liam Williams. I thought the half-backs have been superb. Brad Barrett has skipped to the side magnificently, but it's not a difficult choice today. One man has stood head and shoulders above everyone else. He's had a hand in probably every try that Saracens have scored. He scored a try of his own. He's been absolutely superb today for Saracen. Jamie George is our Heineken man of the match. Okay, okay. Leave it. A little knock on there from Saracen's in possession. So the ball back with the Scotsman. Yeah, and Glasgow will just have to regroup, you know, dust themselves down, move on. They're in good they're a good fettle in the Guinness Pro 14. They've got uh, they've got a semi-final almost uh, sewn up, but they just need to they need to just almost forget about this. Just put it in the dustbin, put the, take it out of the memory bank and just move on and try and finish the season on at high. It's been great to get to the quarterfinals, but yet again they've they've seen the gulf that you've got, the step up. When you get to play against the one, two ranked team as Harrison's are, there's a real quality that you've got to step up and they'll learn that from this lesson to today. Find. Yeah, tough lessons, Set. and the Heineken Champions Cup delivers tough it lessons, it doesn't it? We've seen it over the years, over the last couple of decades. Teams don't tend to profit in the latter stages without having a few scars of battle along the way. Glasgow now playing with a real freedom, of course, in these final few minutes. <laughs> Toji and Berger manhandling. Glasgow attackers behind the 10 metre line. Hastings is still manipulating as best he can. Horn to that short side. Batty again, Release. who made that bust for the Stuart Hogg it was on site. burst a That's few moments made. ago. Tackle. Energy levels that Maro Toji is still putting in is incredible, isn't it? There he is again making another tackle. Ah, uh, don't leave it, leave it, leave it! That offloads went forwards. Well, I just no, think what, what a difference a year makes because he's come out of the Six Nations. Obviously, he's been had a few injuries, but Saracens have managed their international players superbly. Atoji taken away from uh, from playing last week, as was George Cruz, and uh, both of those two have put in big, big performances. And just think it's excellent man management from the backroom staff here at Saracens. And remember, he's going he's going back a row in the scrum. He's played it in the back row today with second row, back row. He is, uh, he is something else. What machine? Well, they were singing his name just a few moments ago. The song that became famous down in New Zealand in the British and Irish Lions tour. Bind! Touted by many as the next England captain. Vinopola for good. Move! Taking on Glasgow. On his own at the moment. There's a bad, away there's a the bad injury to Brad Barrett for Saris, which will be a terrible finish to the game for him. Let it go. Could be very unfortunate. He's lying crumpled in a heap behind Nigel Owens at the moment. Oh, that is not good news. That is not good news at all. He's holding his uh, lower leg and he's on the line, please. Seemed in a lot of pain. Nine. Pretty well. Time out. Um, half ankle area does not. I tell you what, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to, not going to say that the pitch is to blame, but I, I, I'm not a fan of these pitches with lower limb injuries. You know, saw, uh, saw saw a number of injuries occurring. We've already had Tim Swinson go off because he's landed. There's just no give in the pitch at all. And this looks. Really, really serious for Brad Barrett and would be a massive blow for him you know. personally and for the Saracens team. It's not normally the, uh, the problem for, for Brad, is it? The, the lower limb. It's usually the face. He's had 
various different plates inserted in various different places. And it's come like through that, some yeah. tough old times, but given the state of the we season here for Saracens, a semi-final to look forward to against Munster, which will be played at the Rico Arena in Coventry, by the way, in a, a handful of weeks' time. And of course, their challenge for the Premiership, the Gallagher Premiership title too. Yeah, this is it here. It's, it's actually just happening. A collision, boys. In the tackle. Oh, oh, he's just gone over it. Oh, there, left. There's, there's left one. I'm not. I, I'm not sure if that's the pitch or not. I'm, I don't know. Okay, take a turn. I just stretch it on and okay. There's definitely going to be ligament damage there. You cannot go over it like that and not have some sort of uh, injury. You just hope it's not safe. You hope it's only a two, three, four weaker. So he's got uh, if you get a chance, have a huge amount black. to play for, obviously, like semi-finals and uh, the English Premiership. Ten black. Ten black here, yeah. For the second time today, the stretcher's been wheeled on. He's telling to be very careful with his ball-carrying arm, not a good wearing sight. contact with the tackler. It's okay. a concerning moment Just be careful when you're making contact for a man who's so key to right. everything that Saracens do on and off the field. He's back to his feet, but he's distinctly uncomfortable. Can't wait there on that. Uh, Andy said, you know, let's just hope it's uh, at the lower end. He's going to need some help off the field. I, I know people don't like getting on stretchers, but when you've got an ankle injury, get, get on the stretcher. Yeah, no, no he's going to now, I think. Just, suddenly, that distance will feel like a very long way. He's just had a look up and realised he's actually on the other side of the pitch. Well, Listen to this, listen to this standing ovation. They absolutely love him here. And rightly so, Lol, he's, he's, the, he's the heart of the club, isn't he? And he, he's like the old-fashioned club man that doesn't go away for international rugby. And when you come back from, from Murrayfield and Twickenham, you've got to get back in with what they're doing here and back in the culture. And I just think you need players like that in your club to be successful. And he epitomises everything that's good about Saracens. Not the way the captain would have wanted to leave the pitch this afternoon. So Saracens have one final minute to negotiate here. Glasgow wants to finish with something of a flourish. And the Warriors have a penalty advantage. Horn burrowing for it. Hastings, Hogg, sizing up the options. Sam Johnson, who we haven't seen a great deal of, but that is a trademark shuffle from Johnson. Whipped away, and they're within 10 metres. Matawalu coming thundering forwards. Has lost it forward. Lost it. No advantage. We'll go back for the penalty. I think, uh, is it Maratoji or someone not releasing in the tackle there when uh, Glasgow got in behind them? Never released. Six black. Yeah, the time just to pin this in the corner, even though the clock's gone red. Still time for the line out and uh, maybe one last consolation, if you can even call it a consolation score. That score line isn't pretty from a Scottish perspective. Saracens and their fans will be celebrating shortly. Terrific job done Great. here this afternoon. Seven tries in all. Well, they hold out one final time here. Their defence coach Alex Sanderson will hope so, but. Glasgow pouring forwards and they've got their try. Scant consolation in all reality, but Matt Ferguson has their third of the day. Well, in the context of the game, nothing, but let's appreciate a nice piece of skill. Caught Saracens napping. You know, often you see guys thrown up in the air and it, you've got to get knocked backwards before you set it. And this is the quickest way to the try line. A really low, fast throw. Get the drive going over, and Matt Ferguson no, no, scores. They've bookended the game, haven't they, with a, with a great yeah, sort of uh, back score in the first minute of the game, and then yeah, uh, a forward stride yeah. in the last minute of the game. But it's what's happened in between has been the problem, and uh, taught lesson today. But I suppose there's some consolation getting the last score. Huh? Oh, okay. One final conversion for Adam Hastings. No issue, 
I mean, we should probably remember, only made his European debut back in October. He's come a long way in a very short space of time and is absolutely at the heart of what Dave Rennie's trying to achieve with Glasgow. The conversion is good, but the win, that's Saracens. They're into the semi-finals of the Heineken Champions Cup. Their European drive alive. Their European dream alive, I should say. An emphatic victory, 56 points to 27. It is their sixth semi-final in the top flight of Europe. Twice champions, of course. Is 2019 going to be their year? Full time at Allianz Park. Saracens 56, Glasgow 27. Well, they came into this quarter-final as the number one seeds. They've been absolutely superb in the qualification process. And that was, as I said, as an emphatic quarter-final victory as I've seen in this competition for many, many years. They had to deal with the added blow of losing Owen Farrell and Richard Wigglesworth in the week. But didn't they deal with it well? I think they've been absolutely fantastic. And they go marching on. And they are, and they still remain, the side to beat in this year's European Champions Cup. I agree with you, Lol. It depends what happens with Leinster and their performance in the next uh, couple of hours. That was very impressive, and it'll take a very good team to beat them. Terrific stuff from Saracens. Glasgow, of course, beginning so brightly with that try from Ali Price, but seven tries from Mark McCall's men have given them a place in the last four, and our man of the match, Jamie George, is waiting on the side of the pitch with Sonny. Semi-finals for the first time since well, you missed out last year. So what does that mean to this team? Yeah, it's huge. You know, we've had some some great memories made in this competition. We love playing in Europe and we love playing on the biggest stage and this is what the, this is. So um, really proud of the boys. I thought we put in a good performance. There was a little bit of a mix up before the game uh, with Owen. So I hope everything's all right there and Georgie at home. So, um, but yeah, we're really proud of the boys. You scored one of, well, one of the seven tries today. You had a hand in many of the others how much has your confidence been boosted by gaining that regular start for England yeah I think so um, you know, I think more so than ever I'm trying to put as much pressure on myself to back up good performances and um, you know the more that I can do that hopefully the more that I play at the highest level so um, that's the plan so Alex good who needs Owen Farrell hey um, how, how comfortable are you becoming at number 10 Oh, well, it's happened uh, both times against Glasgow, so it was a bit more, uh, a bit normal, a bit more normal, really. But um, no, I'm very lucky. I've got a great team around me. Uh, the boys, um, you know, didn't blink or didn't show any um, nerves or worries around me, so it allowed me just to go and play. And they were outstanding today uh, on the front foot attack. Just uh, amazing the pack. Uh, Munster needed all of their nous and experience to get past Edinburgh. So how do you view that challenge in the semi-finals? Well, look, we've played in the semi-final before and we, we know what a great side they are. You know, they've got a lot of physicality, a lot of passion and they've uh, you know, played very well today to come through. So look, we'll prepare for that in a couple of weeks. But uh, for now, it's about you know, the, going back to the Premiership this week and also appreciating you know, what a great victory that was for us. Uh, you know, enjoying it. You know, we've put in you know, a great performance against the top side in the quarter-final of Europe. So we've got to enjoy that and then uh, come back uh, probably Wednesday, Thursday and, uh, and look at it and, um, and then go to the next game. You're going to be helping Owen Farrell to wet the baby's head? That's the plan, yeah. <laughs> I imagine it is after a performance like. Congratulations, you, uh, you are the Heineken man of the match, and uh, Stuart Forrester is here to present you with your, uh, your trophy. Well done, Jamie.